If you're like most musicians, you wanna make a lot of money in music, but if you're not prepared to manage it, you can screw it all up. This is where a professional money manager comes in. Bobby Borg here, your music business coach with short, no BS advice that can help you turn your passion for music into a more successful business. Over the last 30 years, I've drummed in major label bands signed to Atlantic, wrote several music business books published by Billboard, and taught at major universities like USC Thornton. I recently interviewed money manager Mark Nealon about how to find a money manager. Let's go ahead and listen in on our conversation. How do we tackle this, Mark? Um, if you could just, you know, what should people look for ultimately? Um, you know, how do they make their decision? Care to, let's just, let's just talk. Sure, I mean, there, there are multiple ways of, of trying to find a money manager and it, it, it depends a little bit on how each person approaches such a, such a thing. A lot of people like to go by referrals. They have friends, relatives, and uh, they will ask those friends, trusted people, if they have a money manager and if they feel comfortable with them and then making it if they can make an introduction and go that way uh, other people you know put their faith in an institution let's say uh, somebody prefers a large well-known financial brand and they will go and approach that institution you know go to their corner or their local branch or or local office and go that way uh, other people say prefer to go the opposite way, saying we don't want to go to a huge institution and become, you know, a very small, uh, you know, part of their client base. We'd rather have a little bit more attention, and they go to a smaller boutique, um, you know, an investment advisory or money management firm, so that they can get a little bit more personal time and attention. It's really, you know, a question of what each person prefers. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, you mentioned uh, referrals, um, and of course, you know, uh, generally speaking, you know, if I trust person A and person A refers me to the money manager, you know, you would, that would lead you to believe that, okay, so I trust this person and he trusts them, so I'm going to trust them too. But when you get into that room with the person, there, there needs to be maybe a, a little bit more. Maybe we can talk about those. So is it... You know, should you look maybe at, uh, you know, at, at personality, at, at, at the connection that you make with the person, whether or not the person feels like they're going to give you the time of day, whether or not they're rushing you through things. Because I think ultimately what happens sometimes is, unfortunately, in the finance world, I have noticed that there's, that, that, you know, it's confusing. People are scared. They want to secure their future. And some people can be patient, some people can be real impatient, you know. And um, so what are some of the other factors? Patience personality, you know, values. I mean, can we get deep into this or, or, or just, you know? Sure, I mean, I think as with anything, personal chemistry is, is important. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, as a, as a client or potential client, you are thinking of who do you entrust your resources or, um, to. And chemistry is very important because you're gonna wanna talk to that person regularly, you, you're probably going to want to sit down with them face to face every once in a while uh, to go through things and you want to feel comfortable with that, that sure. that's very important. You, you, somebody, an, an advisor should be patient, should be understanding and should be able to explain things to the investor, right. to the client. Uh, if somebody is using a lot of jargon that's difficult to for, for a, a, you know, a non-professional investor to understand, it's probably something a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable with, sure. and, and, and that's that's good reason. Because I, I always think that an advisor should be able to explain what their money is being used, invested Absolutely, in. Absolutely, right. I think that's important, yeah. And then, of course, real quick, um, they can also check up on the particular uh, manager on, online as well. There's a certain sites you can go to just to make sure that you know, they're in compliance and so on and so forth. What is that site again? Uh, I think it's the SEC site, the Securities sure. and Exchange Commission. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, an investment advisor in the U.S. has to be, a professional investment mm -hmm. advisor has to be uh, registered and licensed. They have to pass an exam, and mm -hmm. only after they pass the exam, they get the license, and then they go up on the uh, SEC's right, uh, right. website. If they're working for an institution, that institution should also be, have a, a link. A uh, link. Usually yeah. have, have a link to... To, to kind of give right, an overview. Right, just to make sure there's no, everything's yeah. cool. Yeah. So, all right, well, great. So thanks very much, Mark. If you want to learn more about how you can turn your passion for music into a more successful business, be sure to check out this video or the video linked in the description below.